Okay, I think we are live. Just testing out a couple things here as we get started. Let's see. Yeah, we're going to uh, take a little look at a uh, distillery that I have known for pretty much my since the origin of my Scotch journey. Hey there, Sloss Cause. Good to see you, man. Uh, you're first. <laughs> oh, there's Trooper. Hey, man. How you doing? How's the audio video, guys? Just give me a, a thumbs up if you don't mind. Just let me know. Um, Lost Cause is going to pour a Lagavulin 9. Nice choice. We're going to have fun getting into this distillery, I have a feeling. Um, it's going to be uh, interesting. As I haven't really thought much ahead about this one as far as how I thought it was going to do. I think it might do better than I initially thought. But we'll see how it goes, because you guys have an influence on how all this goes at the same time. Thanks for that. With Lagavulin, it's funny, because um, when I started out with Scotch, I started out pretty much with a flight. And my first flight introduction uh, was at a speakeasy here uh, near Annapolis, Maryland. And... Uh, they started you out with a Glamorgan G10, I believe it was, which is just a real base, you know, a, a cereal like a multi, um, real basic dram, nothing over the top, nothing really that far from, you know, if you're used to bourbon, uh, just a good, you know, a good dram without a lot of uh, overly sweetness. There's not any corn factor involved, which I like it a lot more than, than bourbon for that reason. Um, but it, it just didn't get me going. And then the second dram was an Isle of Jura of all choices they made. They uh, chose an Isle of Jura for their, just to, I guess, get you introduced to the smoke, basically. has a little smoke to it, but other than that, nothing really outside the box either. But what they had you end on was a uh, smokehead, which is, I believe, the base might be, I'm guessing, I'm thinking it has to be influenced by Lafroy. That's just my kind of like gut reaction. I have no idea what they use, so this is not me saying this. Uh, as far as like, you know, a, a for sure statement. But uh, after having it and, and being my first peated scotch, I thought, well, when I tried Lafroy, it, it wasn't really much different. I already, you know, felt like I liked it. But if it wasn't Lafroy, it was something kind of similar. But the weird thing is, when you think about Lafroy, TCP iodine is, is that type of peat. It's kind of its own thing. Well, if you just move down the street a little bit, that's where you come to Lagavulin. But really, if you think about it, the, the taste, the peat factor, it's all different. And I'm not just talking a little bit of difference. I'm talking there's a major difference between um, the Lafroy peat, the Lagavulin peat, and then up the street there's Ardbeg, which is a whole different ball game too. Uh, none of them are really much alike. I, I guess the, if I had to pair anybody, I would probably pair Kilhoman maybe with um, – Ardbeg, and I might pair uh, some of the peated Bunahaven stuff. I know their base core is not peated, but their their Choi Chick and Kalbanak and uh, their uh, Krogvona, things like that, that are, are peated. Uh, it has kind of a Lagavulin esque kind of, I think, note to it. So I probably would pair those two together. But Lafroy, I don't know. I mean, can you think of a, a peat that's kind of like Lafroy? I, I just, I just don't see it. I don't think so, at least. Wow, that is a great price on that new Lagavulin 11, which I've got right here. <laughs> and uh, I picked this up, uh, just uh, got back in town from a little mini vacation this weekend. Um, went out to uh, Rehoboth uh, Beach, Delaware with the family. And when I was out there, I thought it'd be nice to pick up a little bottle just for, you know, for fun. And uh, thankfully they had it there. It's funny, I'm a huge uh, Parks and Rec fan from when it was on the air. Uh, it's been since long canceled. Uh, and those who know the show know uh, what I'm talking about. But, but uh, Ron Swanson is one of my favorite, favorite characters. It's uh, he, He's just hilarious. Great libertarian. <laughs> but uh, anyway... Um, Already uh, had a little fun. Half, half the bottles are already gone, so 
and part of the reason for that is I decided to pour myself a, a wee little pour, a wee little dram. <laughs> it's it's a little bigger probably than uh than uh, smost, but you know I like my Lagavulin. But anyway, getting back to it, uh, Bowmore yes is fifty percent uh, Lafroy P, and that makes that makes sense of, uh, yeah, uh, the Bowmore and Lefroy, I guess I would pair together. The weird thing about that pairing is for me, and I'm not trying to bash Beam Sun Tory, but the, the, cause I love Lefroy, but the Bowmore quality level to me is like Lefroy is up here and, and Bowmore, I, I don't think is, is near the quality taste wise, consistency wise, variety wise, I mean, across the board, availability-wise, it's just, you know, hey, Juan, good to see you, man. Uh, hopefully, everyone's got a little bit of Lagavulin with them tonight. Uh, my first one was at a speakeasy, and um, after, like I said, having the Smokehead, having some Lafroy 10, uh, they had the Lagavulin 16. And uh, I take that back. It was actually at a com of all types of restaurants. It's a Cambodian restaurant. And I ordered this uh, really good dish. It was mango, catfish, it had rice. It had some, a lot of nice, like, light vegetables, middle to light, like tomato. And had the mango. It had, like, uh, some sort of chutney and stuff. Yeah, all really well done. And on the side, I had my Lagavulin 16. And I don't know what it was, but... Not only did it pair well, the smoke factor from the 16 is just so nice, and the finish lasts forever. It was just just an outstanding experience. And from that point forward, I always have thought, you know what? If I'm going to have a, a bottle in the house, and you know, if I'm not like looking for anything in particular, it's always good to have a bottle of Lagavulin, no matter what the, what it is, what year it is. Um, on the ready because uh, especially a 16 i mean it's kind of like the go-to the 12 is great it's a cast strength it's definitely for more of the octomore fans more beefier peat um definitely really good but you have to be in the mood for uh it has it has some sweetness in it it's powerful like i said with the peat though but you get like cotton candy and uh some like bubble gum on the nose and it's uh got a really nice popcorn oily finish it, it, it's it's all over the place a bit but it's complex in a good way um and then i thought you know after having that and i finally got into the distiller's edition great px influence sherry i think and uh hey dram good to see you um it, it, you have to be in the mood though for a sweet dram with your peat the sweet peat uh, some guys are more savory and if you're leaning more towards you want if you get peat you want to keep it savory you're not going to be a big fan of px sherry cask you know whiskey it's just the way it is but uh, if you're like myself dive every once in a while into an it's just distiller's edition and it's outstanding too uh, it's kind of funny i personally i was thinking about um you know, overall taste. And that's the first uh, type of uh, category we look like we look for in a log of one is uh, taste. And when I'm seeing taste, I'm thinking the whole experience, the nose, the taste, the finish um, across the board and all their offerings from their eight, uh, the nine game of Thrones edition came out uh, not too long ago. Very good. 12 distillers edition. And they also have some fish shell offerings, a uh, yearly basis. They do some specialized uh, casks as well as the jazz festival is another one that they have a, uh, I think a yearly release on as well. Um, other than that though, they really don't dive into like a travel retail market that I'm aware of. Uh, they do have a 25 for the, uh, the guys that have a lot of that. <laughs> uh, once you get, you know, past the fish shield bottles for me, that's where my affordability is going to fall out the window, but they do have a 25. I think they have a 27. Uh, let me see on uh, 37. I'm sorry. Uh, they have a 37 as well, which is uh, kind of a, I have to look and see why they picked 37 as the year for that. I was curious. I don't really see a reasoning. Uh, then it's 51%. Wow. Refill American and European Oak. That sounds beautiful. Uh, only one taste in the database here. Uh, and of course, he's just going to 
say it makes a nice museum piece. So I wonder if he even tasted it. <laughs> he gave it five stars. He probably never even opened the bottle. <laughs> That's sad. Anyway, but um, yeah, they, they, they do have a, a really good um, representation from independent bottlers usually, though. So I have to give them some credit there. But they don't really get outside the, the box as far as uh, they, but like with the carriages series from, from Lafroig, they like put different casks every time. I don't know if they do that as much with the uh, the jazz and the uh, fish shield. Let's see. I'm just going to pull off one of these jazz from the just out of the air. 2015 is a uh, refill American and European oak. So we'll we'll take the 2015. Then we'll look at a different one and see how. Um, if they differ at all, if they're always the same. Used American oak cogshead, new American oak standard barrels. They do change it up every year. So I guess their carriages equivalent is their jazz festival. Um, and the fest shills are more of like, a, I, I guess you could we could call that maybe like Friends of Lafroig equivalent type of thing where they have a, the carriages 15, for example, that type of thing. Um, Trooper loves that that distiller's edition as well, and the nine. Wow, yeah, it's, I think there's going to be a lot of good uh, good feelings on overall taste. Uh, Dram, I'm starting off with the Offerman edition, and thankfully, um, you know, I think is the sixteen is like the gold standard on most Isla Drams really that are peated. Uh, for peated Isla Drams, I think one of the best overall average, just straight up. Uh, what's the word for it? Uh, bar, I guess, is the log of one sixteen. So, with with comparing it to this, I mean, it does have the trademark log of one peat up in your face, which is nice to have. Um, wasn't surprised being eleven years that it was going to have some power to it, but you also do get a lot of. Um, spiciness in the nose I think that might be from the youth compared to the 16 it's I know it's only um, you know five years but you'd be you're gonna be amazed but with three years makes it you know a huge difference one year hell I mean one year could make a huge difference depending on what cast they put in I'm gonna get to that in a second about this uh, bottle and, and one more what what's sad to me is that um, Lagavulin, who was owned by Diageo, if you guys didn't, you know, some of you guys might not have known, but um, they uh, they're not too secretive about the casks. Thankfully for their core, I mean, they when you you know go to the eight, for example, it's straight up. Uh, I think it's Refill American, right? Yeah, Refill American oak casks. When you go to the 16, even straight up just oak barrels that are used for the uh, cast type. Uh, Distiller's Edition is a straight up PX uh, finish. I'm not sure how many years. Let me see if they tell you. Um, if you try, they don't really say. It could be all 16 in the same. Uh, but it says finish, so that tells me. I think it's probably 12. If I had to take a guess, what, then this is not a definite, but I'm guessing that they do 12 maybe in their standard oak barrels, and then they move it over, um, you know, for, let's see, 30, 40, 50, uh, four years, you know, in the uh, PX uh, Sherry cask. That's That would make sense because it's definitely influenced by it, but it's not, you know. Um, the funny thing was... And I've heard uh, Trooper said he got it for sixty-five, which I thought was insane. Or somebody he knew somebody that got it for sixty-five. I thought that was a bit, a bit low. Uh, in Maryland, at one place I saw it, and it was uh, eighty-nine, I believe. Um, let's see, yeah, it's uh, basically ninety at Petite. And uh, when I was out. In Delaware, I picked it up for eighty, so it was about ten dollars lower there. Uh, that I considered a pretty good deal. Uh, if, if you guys get it for sixty-five in California, man, that's some bullshit. <laughs> I mean, bullshit in a good way for you guys, but really bad. 
but I mean, who I think let me go back in the chat here. I think it was uh, I think it was Trooper that said sixty sixty six. His buddy got it for sixty six. I, I I don't see how that's even possible. Place I usually shop that's going to get it. It's one hundred twenty dollars. Holy moly, man! Now that is a markup. I, I guess maybe. The, since they're uh, they don't have it yet, maybe they're getting it last. And since they are getting it last on this particular shipment, they're the ones that are going to be pricing it a little bit higher. I think that's what happens with some of these. And what I can't figure out is how is it that Chicago and Louisiana, in the middle of the country, will get something before it gets its way to the East Coast and also the West Coast? You would think it'd have to go to the West Coast or East Coast first, but I swear to God, I have heard of situations where it seemed like certain, um, not even really certain distilleries, or certain bottles would just go into the middle of the country before we get anywhere else. Maybe there are timed releases where the distillery or the um, distribution center is like, okay, we're going to get it to you guys but you're not allowed to sell it until x days but tram saying a lot of distributors are headquartered in chicago that makes sense so maybe they're like sprouting out from there and and making their rounds there are some bottles that do come into the east coast first uh i have seen uh, and vice versa i've seen california get some stuff before that it even goes anywhere else you never really i guess it just depends on the uh, owner slash distribution slash uh feeling of, of the marketing team that year uh, that's the it's a sad thing but anyway back to this it, it, it's a nice nose it's just um it, it's got some really nice fruit in there too it's just, it's definitely peatier than anything else. Not getting as much smoke as I would expect. It's not really. Um, I don't. I don't. I'm not disappointed that I'm not getting as much. Uh, but let's see. Some like straw and a little bit of leather, even maybe some cocoa. Mm. Definitely the taste you expect um, from that Lagavulin style peat. Um, and here in Hawaii, we get bottles that font sell. That I guess you mean that don't sell. That's sad. That's really sad if that's the case, man. That's I mean Hawaii is a beautiful place, and and I always wanted to visit, but yeah, I mean if you're having a hard time getting stuff there on the islands i mean that would be a drag i didn't think about that but I, hopefully you guys have really eased uh shipping laws how are your shipping laws there one are you able to order anything you want from anywhere you want or do you have to like worry about a bunch of stuff because over here county laws are different uh they change from county to county and you never know really unless you look it up what what you're really technically allowed to do and, and not allowed to do um, but, um, hopefully it gets better. Um, really nice oily mouth coat, kind of reminiscent of a Klein leash. Uh, huh. I love this like buttery popcorn. It has some toffee in there too. And you can really get a lot of spice. This one's a, this one's a spicy uh, Lagavulin, which they haven't really done before, which kind of I'm happy about because sometimes you know you can't decide: do I want a Lagavulin or do I want a Talisker? It happens, you know. Talisker Ten is definitely a damn good dram, as well as their Distillers Edition and other things. So if you are definitely in the mood for a Lagavulin, but you want some spice kick that like a talisker with that black and white pepper action going on which is probably from the youth i'm thinking of here um it, it's it's a really nice taste the finish though is the only thing i'm kind of iffy about it does have some nice like uh mild chocolate i can't tell if it's milk uh, milk or dark yet really i'm leaning towards dark because it's more of a savory chocolate but um, 
it's very it's it has a bit of a dry uh finish it's a little drier for my taste i think but i'm gonna keep sipping on this and and get more into it down the road one thing i was talking about earlier that diageo they, they, they do talk about what cast they use on most stuff for some strange reason i don't know if this is if they're being secretive for a purpose or if it's if it's for a lure or if it's for some other reason but like i said they're really good about telling you but the nine year which is that game of thrones bottle they don't tell you what casks were used um they just say it's a nine year um uh, um, one of eight malts in that series and they just you know say it's going to um, it was just aged nine years but they don't tell you what it was aged in it's 46 percent taste damn good i just don't know anything about how it was you know made and unfortunately the same thing with uh this particular uh, from an edition uh, 11 year no cask information if i had to take a guess i'm thinking that it's definitely um i'm leaning heavily towards american oak it's got a bourbon-esque type of feel to it but i think it does have a touch of sherry in there i mean with um I, I don't know anything about the coloring. Does Lagavulin color their stuff? I believe they might. I don't want to say for sure, though. Hey, uh, Swami, good to see you, man. Do you know if uh, if Lagavulin colors their stuff 100% or not? It's it's tough on some of these distilleries because uh, they don't really tell you up front unless you live in Germany and, and where they have to tell you it's kind of a guessing game uh, on this particular one. I suspect that if it's not sherry uh, based at all, but I am detecting with that spice, it's kind of reminiscent of like a Holland Park fire without the age in, in more complexity. Uh, it's not that caliber of dram. I'm not saying that the fire is worth $300 either. I'm thinking it's worth more like 200. This is more, you know, this is an 80, is ish 80 ish dollar uh whiskey so yeah that's what i was suspecting swami thanks for the uh the fill-in that they they probably do on uh probably using the uh, consistency excuse uh which is kind of sad I, I want it to be natural uh and for 11 years uh unless like i said it's 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 really sitting in that sherry cask which it doesn't really have a lot of time to be in unless they put it all 11 years in a uh sherry but it'd be darker than this i think if it was if it was that long in a sherry cask uh which wouldn't make sense you'd have to have in a bourbon cask for a while I'm thinking a minimum of maybe 10 years and one year maybe sherry but i wish they told you what the hell they were doing with the casking on on those two the eight i'm sorry the uh, the nine and the eleven what the hell tell us <laughs> yeah i show you it'd be, be a little more you know open to what's going on because you're they're really good about their other stuff like if you look up the the 25 you know it's definitely x sherry if you look up the the uh the 10 even i'm gonna get to that in a second they have a, a new travel retail exclusive it's a 10 year it's a permanent extension uh for the global retail market but it's uh 43 abv which is on the low side and uh but they tell you it's an expert and refill and freshly charged rejuvenated casks they're pretty specific and letting you know what the hell is going on now has anyone in in the chat had the Lagavulin 10 Travel Retail Exclusive. The reason I ask is this is the one that I have had actually heard a few negative, negative reviews about by people that I actually trust, um, which is kind of scary to me that, you know, you go through all the hassle of getting a bottle, especially, I mean, travel retails are, are pain in the ass because if you don't go to, you know, Heathrow or Hong Kong, where you can get it the easy way you have to order it or find it through a auction or, or some other crazy method and then you got all these fees and taxes and shipping costs and all this bullshit and it and it makes it even harder and you finally get your ass you know your hands on on a bottle 
it goes through all this and it's ends up being not even a three star whiskey <laughs> out of five. I mean, 2.75 from one of my friends, uh, Stephen Connor said that he didn't think it was all that great. And then you got, uh, my other friend gave it two out of five. And, uh, that's one that I can't speak for myself. And, but I do trust these guys definitely with Steven has been around the block a bit too. So it goes to show, you know, be weary. I'm not saying don't try it, but don't go out of your way, you know, to, to spend more than, than it's really uh, what's feasible that makes it make sense, you know. But uh, thankfully, this one is extremely good and, and does rate well across the board, not just me seeing it. Um, I have seen a lot of uh, others that have already got their hands on this bottle this uh, last month, and uh it's 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 a tasty one. Thankfully, it, w it wasn't as disappointing as this ten ended up. Besides the ten, Stephen and Swami, feel free to chime in. Anybody else? Uh, is there any other one that kind of was off-putting to you that just di just didn't get you rolling? Uh, I know the Stiller's Edition people are kind of iffy on because of the PX sweetness, but um, that's the only other maybe slight issue I've ever heard of a, a, a Lago Villain bottle. Uh, and I'm not talking independent bottlings, just the straight up uh, stuff. And a lot, a lot of their independent bottlings are, are pretty damn good too. Like I've had a exclusive malts. I've had two different sister casks of uh, a, a 12 year cast strength. And oh my God, both are great. Um, I've had um, some other stuff too that, uh, that was independent. That was, I mean, it's always got that trademark P you just can't get away from it. It's, it's pretty good. Steve is not a big fan of the 16, huh? It, what is it about it that you, th um, if I had to think of something to, to, to nitpick on it, I do think it's a thin mouth coat. I'm not sure what it is, why it is. It, it seems a little thinner. I think it's because that you start off with something like that. You at first you think it's kind of a thick, heavy mouth coat, and then it's oily as hell, and that you know. And then you, when you go around the block a few times, you you, you come back to it, and it, it's happened to me with Bowmore. Uh, it, it just seems so thin after I had some thicker whiskeys like uh, the Glen Goines, though, are always really thin, and the. Uh, and, and the Bowmores seem to be on the thinner side of the uh, viscosity deal. Sorry, I've got like some sort of hair in my eye that's driving me crazy, guys. Sorry about that. Anyway, um, Trooper likes the, the, the distiller's edition as, as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, that one's uh, – some of these are so low in ABV, it's it's really tough. But I always do think to try to just drop a one little drop on it. Have you tried uh, – Trooper just dropped in, uh, like literally, like one drop, but with an eyedropper, uh, to see if it makes a difference uh, without using a spoon or, you know, throwing the. Uh, I'm not saying you know dash it or anything. I'm saying like, kind of like with the Dalmore or King Alexander, you got to be really delicate with with that one. I'm not saying it's the best thing ever before anybody bashes me for it. But I am seeing that for a 40% whiskey, sometimes if you do just put a little bitty drop on it, it does make it a lot better than the, what it is just out of the bottle. As I am not a big fan of that bottle without a small little drop to get the, I don't know, chemical reaction going or something. Because to me, it's a little it's a little thin and dead before you wake it up. Um Steven says he doesn't like the ABV and the distant as well. Yeah. I think it's a 43%. I'm going off memory, uh, Stephen. Uh, I've got the, I've got the box back here, but it's so dark and uh, it's so far away that I can't, uh, I can't see it. But if I'm going by memory, I think it's a 43. And this 10 is, is the same, which, you know, once you get underneath 46, it's kind of like, really? I mean, come on guys. I mean, this is especially in America. Don't even try forty percent in America; you just get laughed at. It's got to be at least forty-three, but forty-three even it seems a bit, you know. Uh, let me go up and and check a quick. Uh, yeah, forty-three. Yeah, they're all forty-three. It seems like uh, across the board on uh, their base. So, if I'm going to complain, I'm probably going to get into that. But let's go. Let's start by taste. 
I do like the overall taste uh, across the board on most of their drams, including the 16. So if you ask me, I probably would give them, because I do love the, the distillers. I love the 8, the 9, the 12, the 16. This one's pretty damn good for a spicy dram. It's hard for me not to give them a 9. But um, I have a feeling Stephen is going to give a, a lower number. Stephen, what do you think? Uh, one to ten, ten being the greatest, one being the worst, taste-wise for Lagavulin, nose, taste, palate, experience, all their offerings you've had, jazz, Vichil, throw it all in there. What do you think? The Vichil stuff is unbelievably good. Usually, I have had the eighteen. Um, I've got an unopened bottle here. Um, but I have had a different bottle and uh, really liked it. The, the 12 I love. Um, but they, I, I guess my, my difficulty, my uh, weak suit, is I haven't had the jazz festival stuff. Uh, so I'm liking on jazz, and I haven't had the 25 or 37. So have you, uh, Stephen, have you had the uh, 25 or the 37 or anybody else? And uh, is it up to snuff? Uh, that's Those are the, th the things I'm going to need help with, uh, kind of evaluating with this at the same time as well. Nick Poor, good to see you, man. Uh, eight is uh, 48%. And that's a, that's a damn good bottle for a breakfast dram. If you're in the mood for like a t uh, breakfast burnt toast with eggs and bacon and uh, that like a little than eight. If I'm in the mood for it, that's a that's a that's a tasty one. Kind of reminds me of bourbon, though. <laughs> it is one a little one dimensional uh, for me, but it, it's it is tasty. Stephen has had the 25, not the 37. 25 is great, but the 21 is out of this world. And I'm assuming that when you say 21 is out of this world, you mean it's the best. And I forgot about the 21. I think that's an older one that's not even available anymore. Is that correct, Stephen? Oh, it was a 2012 special release. Damn. Have they had more than one 21 release? Let me look real fast. I don't think they have, which is really sad. Nine, 18. No, they've only had one 21 year release, and that was only in the year 2016. Uh, rates pretty well 57.7%. No wonder you liked it. <laughs> wow, man. Oh, they have, you said? They've, are you saying that they've released uh, other um, – no, that's a 12-year. Sorry. Let me get out of this. I'm at the wrong uh, thing. I just saw it, though. 21-year. Here we go. 2012. Have they released – Are you? oh, they've had two releases. Okay, gotcha. This one is a 52% European first fill X sherry. Mm, that does sound great. Great color on there, too. Deep, like a deep crimson red. Um, looks like it rates really well. Four and a half stars out of five, typically. Um, that's uh, that's impressive. Let me see if they only if that's the only bottle of the twenty one they have in here. Let me see twenty. There's they have some twelves. Twelve twenty one. I said the twenty twelve already. Uh, two thousand seven. I don't think they're going to have that one, but I'm just going to double check to see if they have the notes on it. 2001, 2017. They have some distillery exclusives in here, which is kind of cool. Uh, you don't see those very often. Uh, 12 year, 12 year. They have a lot of 12s, man. My goodness. Um, no, nah, they don't have the 2007, unfortunately. Uh, but it is, of course, it's the highest rated, probably the hardest to find, I'm sure, too, which is always fun. Have you had both of those, Stephen, or just one of the, the 12 or the 7? Or don't even want to know what it costs. I, well, since it's, it's a shame that it's not more of a ready, more available release, because, it, of course, it wouldn't be expensive. But uh, I have seen the... Um, what you call the 25 and I'm pretty sure it was around a thousand dollars something maybe more than that at least it was at a minimum I know I know a grand was was it was a grand plus put it that way and once it gets to that level I, I can't even I can't do the I can't afford the poor Ellens and stuff like that but uh 
man, <laughs> I would love to be able to to definitely get my hands on a um, before the terrorist 2012 1100 in auction, but the 20 2007 was over two grand. Yeah, the 1100 is not a bad price for a, a 12 uh, 2012 uh, probably, uh, but 21. 21 years, man, and you can get some other stuff for a lot cheaper. It's, it's that's a tough, uh, it's a tough sell, but the, uh, how are these tariffs doing? Are the tariffs, uh, making things a hassle, Steven? I, I haven't ordered anything over, over from overseas in a while. So I don't even know if, uh, if these uh, tariffs are kicking our ass or not. Let me know. <laughs> mm. Well, overall taste, I was leaning towards a nine, but I think with you guys, even though you're not really uh, as vocal about it, I'm going to probably bring it down to 8.5. Do you think it's fair? Do you think it's too high for a log of Lagavulin? 8.5 across board for taste. 21 was 550 in California when it came out. Wow, that, now that's a, that's, that's a more reasonable price, I have to say. Um, still on the high side because you can get hell. You can get a Brook Lottie uh, Black Arts twenty three for like three or four hundred. You get the dark and the light, which I think are not seventeen year. Never mind. I guess it's kind of like it, it's 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 high, of course, but it's on the iffy. Steve says I have a couple of sites that bypass the terrace by shipping decorative glass, but yeah, it stops a lot of buying other shops and auctions. Yeah. Trooper saying at eight. All right. Well, I have a feeling Steven's probably going to agree with you there. I'll take it down. I'll take it down. Yeah. I mean, this one is 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 a good one. It's just uh, if I had any complaint, I'm thinking that the finish is the thing. That's that's just uh, if you do like a, a spicy, savory finish, you're going to like this one. That's just not my thing. I'm more of a like a sweet or a oily or a um, real deep smoky, and, and the smoke isn't here uh, like it is in the 16. Uh, this is a little more peat slash spice bite. It's like a spicy bite. Um, so if you like spicy dreams, if if you know Holland Park Fire is up your alley, if you like the um, McAllen, uh, what was it, Edition Two, I believe. If you like. Um, Things like Dark Origins, the Highland Park, if you like, uh, what's a spice bomb? Um, Abelara Abana kind of thing. Yeah, you got to get some Lagavulindrium. Uh, if you got some nine, I would go with a nine. That, that's probably one of my favorites, uh, I'm thinking. Next to the, I mean, I, I just like a sweet dream, though. If you're feeling more savory and if you got some of this, I would definitely pour it. Steven says 8.5 that he was, he's going to boost it up with me. So, yeah, I think that, I think I'll I'll, uh, I'll keep it around there because I think it's, I think they're definitely way above average on taste uh, compared to other distilleries. It's just my thing. You got some nine, cool. I drank my bottle really fast because I really liked that one. Uh, did you open yours yet, Dream? I'm just curious if uh, if this is a new. Uh, a brand new experience or if you've already had uh, some glasses or at least a, a taste uh, at an expo or something or if you've uh, even messed with it yet how about consistency one thing that they do got for them um, yeah I'm not sure if you're saying yeah um, which way basically <laughs> um, consistency across the board i think they're pretty damn consistent like you get a bottle of 16 i i and i've had it for a few years and i've never i never have a bad version or a version that's not up to snuff same with the 12 i've had many times uh it's uh thankfully readily available here uh i've opened it already gotcha well, when when to ten? Just on that bottle, Dram. Uh, how do you feel about it? Or if you're more comfortable with like a one to five star type of rating, um, how, what was your feeling on it? It was on the upper edge. I mean, it wasn't like, of course, it's not old enough to be a miraculous, overly complex whiskey. But 
for what it is, I thought it was a damn tasty dram. Um, I, I think I would lean like a 3.75 to 4 star on the 9 if I had a I'm thinking, you know, I probably lean towards the four out of five. The only thing I think you could really make it better is if you left it in the cask like for twice as long. <laughs> but you know, for nine years, uh, not even a twelve-year-old, it's it's definitely. A... Oh yeah, Stephen, you need to try the nine. I thought it was damn good. We'll see what Dram thinks. If he if he agrees with me, you got to jump all over it. If he's kind of like, ah, it's too sweet for me. I might have to ask you if you're in the more savory drams or sweet drams or where are you in the on the spectrum because that it's I think it does lean towards maybe on the seven out of ten on the sweeter side of things. But um this is definitely three to four out of ten on, on the sweet side. This is more of a savory, spicy one. But lively and, and tasty, really. Leave it in the cast for nine more years, and that's the 16. Wow. Hmm. It's amazing that they're not charging half the price. <laughs> that's the way I look at it, really. Because, I mean, I look at a craft as, as, like, you know, the work you're putting in to make it. And if you're not doing as much work, you're actually doing half the work to get it, you know, ready for me, then why wouldn't you not charge me half price? I think it's logical, right? <laughs> but I don't know. Unfortunately, it's it's the actual supply and demand. If you are willing to spend the eighty dollars to get it, of course they're going to charge you for it. Alan, good to see you, man. Hey, I got my uh, Kentucky ball shirt ready. You ready for another championship? <laughs> I'm not sure if you're into the into the ball there, but uh, I, th I think Alan's from Kentucky, so. I am uh, eagerly waiting the uh, season to see what we get our ourselves into this year. But yeah, consistency. Uh, I think um, I saw someone say a nine from Trooper, and I don't think it's out of the question. I, I really have yet to to find any flaws in their release. Uh, their batches seem pretty regular. When you buy the eight, it's always the same. When you buy the sixteen, it's always the same. When I've had the 12, it's always the same. I, I can't really fault them on a consistency level, which is kind of a, a nice, uh, you know, deal. Oh, no, they lost to Evansville this evening. Oh, that's sad. I didn't get to watch the game after first going to number one. I think it's the, I think it's the shock. We always have a really young team, a bunch of freshmen. Can't rise to the occasion all the time. They're going to falter a little bit, but they'll pick themselves up. I mean, if they're going to screw up, they better screw up at the beginning of the year. <laughs> That's what I always say. Anyway, but yeah, Ellen, we're taking a look at Lagavulin tonight. What's your favorite Lagavulin, Ellen? Uh, do you have one? And uh, what are your numbers? Like one to 10, one being the worst, 10 being the best, taste and consistency. What do you? I, I, I think we're going to give them an eight point five for taste and a nine for consistency, unless anyone has some major objections. Um, then we'll go on to the the next uh, the next category will be variety. And these and the, these um, the twelve your favorite. That's a, that's a good choice. I do love the twelve, and I love how it changes slightly every year, so it gives you something to look forward to. They are very consistent. Yeah, I think we'll have to stick with the nine for that. Variety. That's where I'm kind of torn because they don't have a travel retail exclusive line like a lot of these other distilleries do. Um, I mean, some people don't like, you know, the fact that Helen Park's got 50 different NAS bottlings and DHS. He's not here tonight, but he would uh, be the first to be like, I don't like the fact they have all these, these, uh, this variety, but I'm a big fan because I think it helps, you know, get, I mean, uh, when I look at the Ardbeg bottlings I have and the Lefroig bottlings I have, there's only one bottle of, of Lefroig that I don't want to buy again. That's probably the Select because it's, it's just too basic entry level, 40%, I think it is. It's it's It just doesn't have, just doesn't do it for me. Uh, with Ardbeg, the 10 is just really overly lemon limey to me. Everything else, though, is, is perfection. I love it. 
and um they've had some hit or misses with the drum wasn't my wasn't near as good as the grooves or kelpie or dark hove dark hove was like the the best ever um or the supernova or you know the Ardbog, things like that it wasn't that level but it wasn't like horrible or bad you know so with uh lagavulin they don't really have as many op times to fail i guess they do have the jazz festival stuff which it's it's kind of like the carriages they do have the shield but they just don't have uh, a lot of these extra bottles on the side what do you rate the eight and nine um the taste I gave an eight point five for Lagavulin and the uh, consistency a nine. If you're saying like what other uh, distilleries got something similar, um, like Spring Bake, I got an eight point five for the taste, but only a seven for consistency because they're just not a they're not a they're not really trying to do consistency there because they're more of a craft shop. Um, but that's why I have kind of scores that kind of fluctuate. You know, they you look at the craft and you look at the uh, consistency. So it kind of balances it out. When you come down to Kentucky, I have a flight of hard, hard bag. Oh, hope to have some. That would be awesome, man. I'm, I'm there. Uh, Steven just poured uh, some 12. Dram thinks the nine smells like bubble gum. Yeah, it does have a little bit of that. Uh, same kind of feel that the 12 does it's just not as uh, strong because it's not a cast strength but still a good taste and i'll definitely take you up on that alan i'll let you know when next time i'm in the in the area steven says there's not a lot of variety cast variation wise yeah have a good lineup they do have a good lineup with the statements but but the variety i'm gonna have to nick them just a little bit only because it's it, it, and even though they have the jazz festival years as well as fish shill, it's hard to it's harder to track those because they don't really do a good job, I think, of marketing those as well as like the carriages series from Lafroig or the different named like bottlings from Ardbeg, like the Kildalton and the the Ardbog and and things like that, the Perpetuum that aren't technically in like their yearly series. They also have like some some years where they'll do two at a time, so it's kind of. Uh, and they don't really do any like Amatiato casks or Marsala. They don't do Madeira. They don't. I'm, I'm sorry, like Sauternes. They don't do the uh, those type of offerings like your Kohomans or uh, Ardbog, uh, the Ardbeg stuff like that. So that's when I had to nick them on variety. I was trying to think of how low to take it. I'm thinking a seven is since they do have the the Fischl and the uh, the jazz. I think I'm gonna not go too crazy on them, but I think a seven is probably fair. Not at least outside of Isla. I agree they tend to be Dean variety. Yeah, they, they do have distillery uh, bottlings. I've noticed uh, where they only release it at the distillery, which. I know if you live in Scotland, like that, that's like the best thing ever. But for us, if we don't ever get a chance to, you know, taste it, unless we get our ass over there, the dream says give them a six. <laughs> yeah, it's it's tempting because other than like your PX or sherry casks and your typical American slash European oak cask, what do they really do with their juice? <sighs> 6.5 dram let's let, let's meet in the middle on that because i'm, I'm kind of talking myself down that road but i'm thinking that uh i don't want to do go too too nuts <laughs> they went consistency in the flash of 16 it's just a uh, still are not too smoky not too sweet just a good pour yeah i agree with you there yeah for shill jazz distillery only releases that's really all the the only <laughs> he said only a five. I don't think Dram's a big fan of uh, of the old log of line. Uh, I don't know. It's it's kind of a six. Uh, Stephen would say. Well, that's why when I started out with a seven, I brought him down to a six point five to meet kind of in the middle. Uh, I might come back and readjust it. We'll see. All right, let's think about age statements. Now they're pretty good about that. You have to say they have an eight, they have a nine, they have a ten. They have an 11, they have a 12, 
They have a 16. They have an 18, 19, 21, 25, and a 37. That's 11. <laughs> That's 11. Jan does uh, does like them. Yeah, I was just messing with you, but yeah, I think I think I think the six is is is. I'm thinking about. I got the six point five still up there for now. And if you want to follow along, you can with uh, if you go to the channel up to discussion, uh, you can click on the spreadsheet and actually have it open and, and see me fill these in. I think in real time. If not, when I save it, it'll definitely update. But uh, you can at least see all the distilleries, who owns them, what region they're in, and what scores we've given the the already the first nine that we've done this is our 10th distillery that we're taking a look at uh, which is really fun actually to do um like of one was my introduction to p i think it was the perfect place to start yeah i, I think that if you are gonna i would not get i mean i know that that lefroy did the select to try to get people uh, an option for getting into Lafroig, but I just would not start anyone with a Lafroig Pete because it's so particular. It's so TCP iodine hospital like bandage. I love it. I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying it's extremely strong and particular, and you love it or hate it kind of thing. Um, and the same thing with um, some of these other Pete's, like the Kalila Pete is so vegetal. I kind of tend to do recommend Kalila 12 as a good uh, like opening bottle, but I mean, quality wise, I do like the Lagavulin more. It's just uh, I, I think the the extra years uh, helps a lot in the smoke factor. Uh, the only ones that are not age dated are the Distillers Edition and Distillers Edition. Well, and technically, the Distillers Editions actually do have, I mean, it's not like a number age statement, but they do tell you specifically that, uh, I've got one here just to show you what I mean. You probably already know this, but uh, they tell you it's distilled, like this one I've got is uh, from 2000, bottled in 2016, 16 year. Um, so even though they don't put that fat number on there, they do tell you the distilled date and the bottling date, and you can kind of figure it out from there. Um, I love the fact that their batches are, are pretty damn good on the uh, on consistency for their distiller's edition as well. That's why I gave them such a high number for consistency. They are very good about that. Good to see you, Adolfo. I uh, love the triple wood. Yeah. For Lafroy, it's a it is it is a, a damn good uh, woody. You have to be in the mood for a woody dram. And same thing with the the new uh, triple wood uh, carriages uh, cast strength. I, I already almost ran out of that bottle. Yeah, the, the Silver's Edition stays sixteen and gives a year. Yeah, uh, nine for uh, luxuries. Yeah, it's hard to ding them on. Uh, on the a statements they're really they're pretty good about that I, I i'd say um love the fact that they're all in port ellen i think that's why i love the th i call them the trifecta ardbeg lagavulin and lafroy i think are the probably my favorites ab above all else um, i mean it's kind of hard to get away from uh, the kilhoman and bunahaven so they're a close 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 uh fourth and fifth and in, in no exact order but uh Man, the, the, the Port Ellen theme is just so damn good. <laughs> it's something crazy about it. It's it's hard to nine ready for consistency. Yes, I, I gave them a nine uh, trooper earlier for the uh, for the uh, consistency. They uh, so this is where we are so far um, for the taste. We have an eight point five. All right, good to see you, Alan. And thanks uh, so much for uh, stopping by. And I will definitely let you know when I'm uh, uh, back in uh, in the home state. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it, and uh, hopefully get to hang out sometime. And I'll definitely bring a few bottles with me uh, that I think that you'd be interested in. I've got a few that uh, I've got saved up for some uh, higher end uh, uh, connoisseurs that like to to really enjoy a 19, 20, 22 year old distillery whiskey, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, it's glorious that Nick Port. You're right, man. That, that 
I, I, that that's going to be whiskey, I think, for me for maybe even the year. It's how good that that dram is. I haven't popped open my 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 Ardbeg nineteen uh, Trevon though, man. That's going to be that's, that's going to be hard to beat. But but that carriage is triple with for not being a very old whiskey. They know how to they know how to turn these out every year, man, and, and and make them so different and so good at the same time. It's crazy. All right, so. Uh, Trooper, just to get you back where we were here, we got taste. We got a, a 8.5 for consistency. We have a nine for variety. We have a 6.5 only because you know we're just we just need some some more cask offerings that I talked about earlier. And for age statements, though, we're kicking ass with a nine. It's hard to beat that. Uh, the nose in the 19 is fabulous. I bet it is, man. I, I can't wait to 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 open my bottle. I'm, I'm kind of like you know. Part of me wants to open it like so fast, and part of me is like, as soon as I open it, man, I gotta, I, I can't be letting that just lollygag around unless I spray it. I do have some spray that I could do. I just haven't used it yet. It makes me a little nervous. Uh, I hope that uh, there's no chance of ruining the bottle. <laughs> but anyway, we're an availability. No, actually, I do have it, man. You don't have to send. You don't have to send me one. I do have a bottle. No, an no, unopened no, no bottle. Um, I do appreciate it, though. It's very kind of you. Um, but I, I don't want to take your uh, your whiskey definitely on that level, man, because that stuff is not cheap. <laughs> that stuff is expensive. Um, availability. This is where they shine. I mean, I, I, it's hard to knock them for availability because every liquor store has the 16, definitely. And most of them always have the distiller's edition. And most of them always have the eight, which I consider their prime core. Now that they have kind of, uh, you know, got the 12, I, I do see the 12 fairly readily available in the higher end stores, um, as well as if they do a special release like the nine, this new 11, really easy to, to, to get their stuff, uh, minus the Feshil and the um, Jazz Festival stuff. Uh, their core is 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 in some of these specialty newer ones. That they're they're trying to. I guess they're trying to better their variety. I just hope that they are are better about letting us know what type of cask. Because they very well could be using some specialized, spicy, nice you know cask that's that's uh, particular on this. But unless you tell me what it is, I have no idea what it is. You know, uh, and as well as not just availability score uh, trooper. I think you're right. Um, not only are they in every liquor store practically, they are in every bar I've always gone to. It is very hard not to find a bar that does not have the log of one sixteen. I, I just can't think of one off the top of my head. That's how easy it is to find. And and also here at least, I see the eight in a lot of places now. Um, as well as sometimes the twelve for uh, some of the higher end bars have the uh, 12 one hand. Uh, that's where I first had it was uh, at a speakeasy in, uh, in Annapolis. Very good stuff. It's awesome. That's one thing I will say about Diageo. You might not like everything that they do, but when it comes to the way they carry this brand, this distillery, it's phenomenally done well. I mean, it's, it, they just, they do do a good job. So, so far so good. We'll get to the craft in a second. That's where they they we need to have a little talk, but we'll see we'll see about that in a second. Uh, availability though is a solid nine. I, I have to say, uh, you think it needs to be 0.5 less on, on availability than Lafroy? Uh, is that because of the uh, the bar availability or the store availability? I'm just curious if. Uh, to me, they're really damn close. Uh, I've got Lafroig's availability as 8.5. So you're thinking it should be an 8, it sounds like. Hey, DHS, really good to see you, man. Now, I know how it goes. Don't worry. Uh, that's what's great about the rewind button or a... a uh... Yeah, I'm thinking that it's uh, the, Laf the Lagavulin's a little bit better uh, for availability. That's why they get a 9 versus the 8.5 for Lafroy. I think that's a, a, a really good uh, fair score because both to me are pretty damn easy to find, thankfully. That boy's showing up. 
<laughs> oh, I know how it goes, man. You think uh, Lafroy is the easiest overall in the United States? Hmm. I think it. I think it also depends on your geographic location. I'm thinking like average across the board from like California to here and everywhere in between. I think they're pretty damn close. But what do you think, DHS? Uh, I think you said they're about uh, Lagavulin. You think's better on availability. So it just goes to show. I mean, he's down in. Uh, he's up. I'm sorry in. Uh, in like. Uh, Kentucky slash Ohio area. Stevens down more in the Tennessee area. So it's kind of, you know. And here they're about the same, really. I think Lagavulin might have a little edge when it comes to maybe the bar scene, but yeah. Hmm. It's it it's 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 a tough one. It's a it's a it's a real tough one. I'll have to think about that one to see uh, yeah, from your travels. No, I'm not disagreeing with you. I miss, I missed uh, trying to get how to average it out to where it makes the most sense. In New York uh, City, a hotel bar, Lagavulin was there in Lafroy. Yeah, I think East Coast, it's it's tough. It's a little more tough to find Lafroy uh, because they already have a Lagavulin and maybe an Ardbeg or a, uh, one of their peated uh, offering. It could even be a Glenlivet in the Dura or something weird. But uh or like a Balvini uh, peated thing, but oh, look, liquor stores. Yeah, no, I'm trying to think of them both equal liquor stores and bar scene, like in one score. That's why I'm, it's, it's really tough. But I think Lagavulin has a slight edge uh, on the uh, bar scene, but the liquor store, yeah, it's kind of it's 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 a real tough one. Difference is most will have three Lafroigs if they have one. Yeah, that's true. Because, yeah, you'll usually always find, like, one log of one 16, and if you're lucky, the distiller's edition. Maybe the eight, but but typically just the 16. And they'll just have, like, one Arbeg 10, but they'll have, like, three Lafroig offerings. I have been many mom and pops, yeah. I'm, yeah, I think uh, Lafroig might actually have a little edge up on the uh, the, the stores, that's true. I'm going to have to swap the scores. <laughs> it's not going to, honestly, the cool thing about this guy is even if I swap them, it's not going to make a huge difference on the uh, the overall total with a 0.5 difference, but uh, I might swap them. We'll see. All right, let's think about value. And while we think about value across the board, does anybody else have this 11? And if you have, uh, what did you think about it? I'm just curious. It's so funny how it reminds me so much of um, that Highland Park uh, fire type of uh, dram. A Longmore 16 kind of thing. So you might not have seen it, but it was there. Also, Game of Thrones edition. <laughs> Every store has Lafroy 10. Yeah. I had a party 11 over at Jason from the Mash and Drums house. What do you think of it, DHS? I mean, it, it's, 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 it's tough because I love the nose of it. I like the initial palette of it. But, man, it's, it's, it's so different. With that, that then the finish just is is not really there for me as much as I was hoping. It, it's a little dry. Um, between one to five stars, uh, 0.25 increments. I'm thinking I'm gonna have to give this like a maybe a 3.25. I think it's better than average. Might go up to a 3.75. I, I don't. I doubt it. It's it's better than average. It, it's good, but it's. Yeah, it's it's very it's got like a black and, and white peppery thing. I do like the fact that it's got a uh, I, I like the fact that it's it's got a tal talisker esque type of feel to it. I just just wish it had more sweetness to balance out the pepper spice action. Dummies gave it a two point one two five out of four. Yeah, their scale is tough because with the four people, I wish they had a five star scale because when you have four people. And they all give it somewhere around a two. It's really hard to determine what the hell they really think about it. To me, sometimes it's it's harder for me to understand. 
you know, I do get Talisker for sure there. Yeah, it's got that kind of, um, I will say the best whiskey I've ever had was a Lago Volan. Which one was it, uh, DHS, out of curiosity? What do you guys think for value? Um, one to ten, if you were, you know, going to slap a number, bang for your buck, when you sell out the $80 it is for the 16 or this guy, uh, 100 110 for the distillers, uh, they didn't like it with water. A 24-year-old fish shell, man. Oh, you lucky. You had the early fish shell. That's the only one I haven't had, <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> I bet that's damn good. I'm going to have me a little bit of, uh, now you mentioned water with the spice. I just want to see what it does. I've given a baby, a baby uh, tap of water just to see. Value is hard because the price for the 16 can be $60 in some markets and 110 in other markets. Well, anyone spending over, I'd say, $90 for the Lagavulin 16 is going to the wrong place. They need to, to expand their, their horizons because I can easily get every Lagavulin um, pretty much uh, 16 wise for like 80. This one you can get for 80. The the 12 is like 125 to 130. For cast strength, I don't think it's terrible. Um, and for the uh, the eight, I think it was around 75 to 80. I think it's lower. I think it was more. Not kind of a lot lower. I think it was like more like a 70 dollar bottle. The 16 is 110 dollars in Kentucky everywhere. That is nuts. Wow, that is crazy. One hundred and fifty to one hundred sixty dollars, Jiminy Jesus, man, that's insane. <laughs> that's crazy. Holy moly! In the sixteen Moscatel edition, I've never even heard of a Moscatel edition. What was that like? Um, was that a uh, was that like a was that an independent or was that a distillery? bottle i don't even know if i've seen the and you're really close with the spelling it's m-o-s uh that's the only difference i think it's been a while since i've seen the word <laughs> moscatel edition I'm trying to see if i can find it here that's very specific they have the elements of isla lg8 in here but that's one of those uh independents i think the cadence head but i'm looking for any like yeah they see i usually don't do a, a labeled um casca name type in their uh in their stuff so i don't think i've seen the moscatel deal huh it was a fish shield okay gotcha yeah, just, I thought Tennessee was expensive with Lagavulin. Yeah, that's insane, man. Well, I guess value is going to be a tough one because it's so better here, but compared to you guys, man, I would be pretty pissed if I had to spend over $100 for it, man. Damn. Um, well, when the 10, I guess I'll have to look at it like this. I'll think of what I would give it, and then I would – you know, think what you guys would give it, and I'll try to factor it in together. For me, the value is decent. I'm not going to say it's great, great, but I'm not going to say it's bad here. Um, five, we'll say, is 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 piss. You know, base ass average. I, I definitely would give them like a seven. I would think, or. A, Maybe even an eight, but seven point five. I guess I would probably settle for. But factoring in your score, since uh, they're so high in the middle of the country, I mean, but you guys still got got the Costco people spending fifty bucks, yeah, fifty five dollars for the sixteen in Wisconsin. It's just, it's just, it's asinine how ridiculous the these freaking prices are all over the place. I just want consistent prices. I mean, why is the guys? I mean. I know the cost of living is different in some areas, but it's expensive to live in D.C., it's expensive to live in New York, it's expensive to live in San Francisco, and it's expensive to live in, uh, I don't know, throw another Boston, I guess, you know. Muscatel was the 2017 Fish Hill. That sounds good. 
I'm just opening it up here real fast. Here we go. 16 year Muscatel wine cast, sweet fortified wine. Gotcha. They're typically what their sister distillery, Kalila, uses for its distiller's edition. Ah, oh, interesting. I just learned something. 6,000 bottles were produced. Cast strength at 55.8. Wow. That sounds like a really good one. I'd like to get my hands on that bottle. Probably never will be able to if it's always 2017, a few years back. But uh, I do have an 18. Maybe someone will send a sample or something sometime. <laughs> It's expensive for distributors in smaller states to buy scotch when it doesn't move fast. But Lagavulin moves so fast. I mean, how are they not selling this stuff like hotcakes? Is my I, I, the price has got to be you know part of an issue here? Well, what would you guys slap for value? I'll factor it into. I, I'm thinking seven point five, but I'm going to definitely slap it in for what you guys would give it. Thankfully, the official I've got is the 2018, which uh, I did like a lot. State of 2 million people versus state of 10 million. Yeah, that's true. That's a huge difference. Think of it that way, but you're right. Hmm. 7.5 versus what, guys? 6? You guys in the 6 area? Then I would probably factor it down to like a 6.75. I'll try to keep it to a 0.5 increment if I can, though. Trying to think, seven point five. If you guys thought it's six, six point, I guess I'd probably bring it down to six point five. Honestly, I think Lagavulin is below average in value. Well, six. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I would agree with you, DHS. But the sheer fact that seriously, you, there's plenty of places. Costco is a perfect example of this, and I know Costco is not everywhere, but. You can get it for fifty-five, fifty dollars in a shitload of places. Even at eighty for the sixteen, he thinks it's overpriced. <laughs> I don't know about that, man. Sixteen-year-old whiskey, eighty bucks. Steven agrees with them, though, man. But th I mean, think of it. Think of it this way, guys. You're comparing this with other sixteen-year-old whiskeys for the price. I agree with the. Agree with you there. That the craft. Is a problem, and that, and we are going to ding them on craft here in a second. I, I, I promise you, we're going to ding the shit out of them on craft. The coloring and the chill filtering enough is enough to just want, make you want to like cringe. But value is a tough one. I got to be careful about value because, yeah, you're you're right. But I can, I mean, there's there's a, a lot of places, 120, 130. 25 30 bucks maximum you can get the 12 but you guys are saying it's 150 160 dollars there i mean that's just nuts 46 for 40 bucks yeah i guess you're right you can consistently get it for 69 dollars in minnesota yeah see you gotta factor in the entire country i mean i wish i had some people from uh montana nevada um that area mountainous area in the west I wish I could. Uh, I wish I could, like you know, get some of their uh, prices uh, involved with it. Uh, what's your view of average value brand? I'd say. I mean, I can't use Johnny Walker because it's not a single malt, but it's 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 really tough because, like, what you guys, you probably would think like a uh, Glendronic would be be one but for me it's extremely high priced here in maryland so it's it, it, it where you are in the country is such a huge factor with the value i gotta that's why i gotta take it across the board the guy in costco me and you guys in the middle of the country that's that's getting shafted it's like it's it's um man I picked up the 2017 cast ring for 80 bucks on sale. Wow. Yeah, you should have grabbed two, Mal. Hey, nice to meet you, Malty, by the way. I don't think we met before. If we have, I forgot. I'm sorry. But um, welcome to the channel. And, uh, yeah, for that kind of price, you're crazy not to get two because that's at least $130 here even uh, on a regular uh, basis. Yeah, see, Trooper, here, that you can't even look at the 2018 for under – Hundred, let's say two hundred and eighteen to two twenty is what I usually see the eighteen at. 
no no joke it's like fifty dollars difference so that's where i'm kind of like this value thing is really hard to gauge um i think six is is, is probably going to be fair because if if i take myself on the east coast i take the guys at costco that are underpaying for it and i take factor it in with you guys that are in the middle that are that are really getting shafted i'm sure that the guy in in minnesota slash wisconsin that's paying 50 dollars for the 16 on a regular basis or you know 80 dollars 90 dollars for the 12 i'm thinking they're probably going to give the the value like around an eight i'm going to give them around a seven you guys are going to give them like a four or five if I factor it all together, I'm thinking I'm, I'm thinking of getting a six here. It's 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 a tough one. I'm gonna have to fight with this. It's a it's a bitch. <laughs> Let's for now we'll keep it to a six and and see where we go because it's uh he says below average value. Wow. Twenty four. How's that a value? The eight year is sixty to seventy dollars. Well, the Glendronic eight was the same price. I mean, the uh, I'm trying to think. I mean, most most unfortunately, most uh, distilleries don't even give you an eight year option. You're lucky if you get a twelve, a fifteen, and an eighteen, and that's about it. Um, Unless it's cast strength or some something like special about it, but you rarely ever get like an eight year option even. But I don't. I know what you're saying. It, it, it it's a tough one. All right, guys. Just to, to make you a little happier, I'm gonna give it a five point five for the value. <laughs> Subject to change. Subject to change. I'm, I'm, I, I just, I just think they're they're they got to be an average value, at minimum five. I, I guess five is probably. If you guys are thinking below, I'm thinking like slightly above, and the guy, I don't know, man, that's awfully low. I'm sticking to five point five. <laughs> I gotta stick to my guns on this one because I, I just, I, I just, I, I don't know. It's just really hard to, to fathom because I agree that the twenty-five year is is crazy, is a crazy price. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you on that one. Yeah, it's, it's the worth factor is is the problem, I guess. That's why I think I'm gonna I'm gonna stay with the old 5.5 on this one because it's right at average, I'd say across the board. Anyway, let's go into uh, the craft factor. Now, this is where it's gonna get probably a little dicey because um, I might nick them worse than you guys for all the little crazy stuff that they do with this coloring and chill filtering and stuff. Do they chill filter all their stuff too? I mean, this is 46% on the uh, 11. That's a nice uh, little boost at least, but um, I don't see. Chill filtering. I know uh, Swami already let us know about the coloring issue. The 12 isn't chill filtered or colored. Yeah, that, that's, I guess it's the premium price you're paying is, is uh, where you get it not chill filtered or colored, but the 16 is both on a regular basis. I think this 11 is as well. At a 46, they shouldn't, but it's colored, I have a feeling. For 11 years, unless there's some sherry stuff going on here. And it, it, this is the problem. They don't tell me what they're using. So I have to, and if you're not slapping it on the box or the bottle somewhere that you're not coloring or chill filtering, it's kind of it's kind of hard for me not to 
consider it done, you know. I think the standard for is 45.7 or less. Maybe 46 is, is just high enough for them not to have to do it. But uh, but either way, the 16 and, oh, DHS saying 11 is all bourbon. Well, there you go. Yeah, I think that's uh, definitely a coloring issue, even if you don't even go toward the uh, the chill filtering issue. The 16 is 43 is, is the Stiller's edition, yeah. Yeah, the craft is is a tough one because the, they they tend to be really low in their ABV when it goes below the forty six for the forty threes. That yeah, the Game of Thrones one is comically colored. What was the? Um, let's see. Let me look and see what the. Sorry, I thought I had it already up here. Here we go. Mm, if I remember correctly. That one was a higher ABV, but I could be wrong. Let's see if the nine is even in the list here. It should be. There we go. Forty-six. That's kind of a that's a, that's not a bad a bad deal for the. Uh, the, the they're going to get nicked a little bit for the coloring, though. I, that's just kind of, you know, even if if I can't be too sure about the. Uh, the chill filtering issue with the ABV differences, but they made all the uh, Game of Thrones bottles the exact same color. <laughs> the taste was exceptional, though. That's why it became questionable when Helen Park went from 48.1 to 45.7. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the thing. It's like... I know they do it for consistency. There's a lot of people that argue about that uh, to make the look consistent, but I want it to be more closer to the natural look of consistency, not the darker look of consistency. I know they're doing it to trick people into thinking that it's something that's not, um, that they won't like it as much if it's not dark, but uh, I, I, that's not the case. Because, I mean, of course, I'm, I'm not going to expect it to be dark if it's all bourbon. It's just basic common sense, you know. Yeah, the gimmicky thing is kind of uh, scary. <laughs> Thankfully, with that series, though, I'm going to have to give them a little credit here. So don't think I'm, a, I'm a, not a Diageo fanboy or anything, but with the quality of those drams, it, look at the White Walker, how much of a disaster that was. If you look at the quality between the Klein Leash, the um, the Oban, the Dalmany, the uh, Talisker, and even um, I throw in maybe the Rule of I, I haven't, tr I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, Glen Doolin. The, the, they're actually pretty solid drams. I mean, they're not like. And they weren't like crazily priced for some of those. Like the the Glendulin was only thirty five bucks. The uh, Oban even I think was uh, not that bad, and it was a, actually one of the. I'm not a, even a huge Oban fan, but uh, I do like this one compared to the fourteen, the Little Bay, and some of the other ones. Um, had more smoke in it to me. Um, better taste overall. So that that aspect, even though it is kind of gimmicky with the way they did it, um, I do appreciate the quality of what they put out for the price that they were putting it out for. So I'm not a complete disher of uh, of what Diageo does, but, and I gave them credit earlier about you know the way they handle the brand. They do a good job. It's just the craft of the, of it could be better. Um, but, I mean, are they a lot different than a lot of other distilleries? A lot of distilleries, like Dalmore, they do color the hell out of their whiskey. They do have low ABVs, and they do um, chill filter at, at below 45 you know, percent. So it's like they do have a lower quality uh, in terms of craft, uh, com definitely compared to Kilhoman, um Let's say uh, Anola Lafroy does not color uh, a lot of their stuff. Uh, 
Ardbeg, I don't believe does either because uh, there's like that that Blasda, for example, is a good example of just a straightforward uh, bottle. I be- the, don't believe has any coloring in it, and if they do have dark uh, drams, usually they're from sherry influences. So it's kind of um, something. I'm, I guess. I'll, what do you, What do you think's too low for craft? Uh, as far as uh, comparing them, and not just the other island distilleries, I'm comparing them to all distilleries, all the space sides, all the uh, you know the ones that do do a lot of this junk. So, be careful. Three is too low. <laughs> I'd hope so, man. That's like beating the hell out of them. <laughs> I'm sure you're going to think five's too high. So it sounds like you're thinking the four is probably where you're going to shoot for. Do I think they're below average on craft compared to all other distilleries? Man, that's a tough one. I don't know about that, man. I think 43% below is too low. Yeah. 4.5 or 5. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see. They're they're probably sitting pretty at about average uh, when it comes to that. That looks about right. I'm thinking. I'm just looking at the scores to see what what I think as far as comparatively to to the others, and I think it's fair. Um, I mean, Springbank for craft gets at nine point five because they do everything in house. Um, Lafroig I gave a uh, a seven point five because they don't do the coloring or chill filtering usually. Um, they might chill filter like the select, but I don't think they get really involved with that crap, you know, and other stuff. Um, Five is, 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 is pretty much average, and I think a lot of places do do the color chill filtering thing, unfortunately. But they do have some nice cast strength offerings from time to time. They, I do like the fact that they are up front about 75% of their casks. I just wish that they would get on the ball with this 11-year and their 9-year as far as letting us know what, what the hell they're doing. Because when you don't tell me something, I'm thinking that it's... Uh, you know, it's making it out like you're hiding something or not doing something as well as you could be. I need to understand the definition of craft to give a rating. Craft, I'm just talking about like overall, like how they make it. Like with, with Springbank, they got it such a high score because they do their own bottling, their own malting. The only thing I nicked them for for their craft is they have kind of a the shitty box, to be honest with you. Uh, everything else is pretty much spot on perfect when it comes to Springbank's craft of how they deliver a, a whiskey bottle to you. Um, you know, do they have uh, cast strength offerings? Do they uh, do they do a higher ABV? And thankfully, Lagavulin does stick to about 46, 48 on some of their higher end stuff. Uh, I know their 16 is 43 and their 8, I think, is also, is it 40? What is the eight? That might be a higher one. Is that 48? That's 48 on the eight. So they're pretty good about the, um, and of course on the 12, it's it's cast strength. It's like 57 or whatever. But yeah, I think I'm going to stick with the five because Trooper's thinking 4.5. Steven's thinking six. It's a, uh, Trooper's saying the Kilkirin eight cast strength with a nine DHS likes the, the kill current eight cast strength a lot better. I don't know. I like them both. The, the cast strength is a cast strength. So I think that's going to be the, the edge already uh, when it comes to that, the, it's only 46% of the nine. So I, was, I don't know if I would compare those two. Uh, if you're going to do comparisons, with the Kilcurin 8 cast strength, I would probably would pick another uh, cast strength log of one. I wish they had a younger version of the 12, like a, uh, 
the ten. They, they maybe if if someone from Diageo is watch, watching that has any pull, maybe they can pull the uh, the travel retail exclusive Lagavulin ten and and put a uh, a cast strength version of the nine uh, with an extra year. <laughs> that would be awesome. Four point five. I'll, I'll water down the Kilkaren down a lot. Just as a result, get more risky free. <laughs> I think a rating is highly subjective. Could be uh, ABV, natural color value, soon as disclosure. Yeah, it it, it is. I mean, th th these are. Th I would consider it, this multi a a subjective collection of uh, high end whiskey reviewers. Uh, what we tend to like and dislike in whiskey and just kind of like a snapshot of a like a focus group kind of a thing um so yeah it's subjective but it is within the realms of what you know the collective thinks to a point to a degree um And then they, you know, if and this craft isn't there, then you know it's not there. It, it should be. A, they still get a B plus overall, the seven point five. I mean, it's it's not a bad score comparatively. You know, they're hanging they're hanging with uh, all you know, Kilhoman. They're hanging with Holland Park. They're hanging with uh, uh, Lafroy. They're all around the same. You know, seven point five to eight out of ten. So, I think we're being fair. You know. Just because I might give Lafroy an A minus and, and Lagavulin a B plus doesn't really mean that I think that Lagavulin is is uh, down here and Lafroy's way up here. I think they're like, and depending on my mood, I think it's like this a lot of time where, you know, I might prefer Lafroy go on a Monday and then the Tuesday I might, you know, go for the Lagavulin only because of you know. Do I want the hospital or do I want the heather, uh, not heather, but the uh, the coastal briny, you know, bacony uh, campfire peat? You know, it's it's just a whole different ball game. But both good, both and both well above average. I think they're both well above average distilleries. Uh, love both to death. Uh, like to collect both. Wish log of only had more options to collect. That wasn't going to cost me a fortune. To get some of these jazz festival bottlings and the fish shields, it's not the easiest thing in the world, but it is what it is. And it looks like Lagavulin can make a great whiskey for sure, uh, but you'll pay for it. Yeah, he doesn't think they use quality casks. I don't know. It's kind of they really don't get outside the box with casks. I'm not. I'm not sure if I would ding them and say you don't use quality casks. I don't think they're very adventurous, or go outside the bourbon slash American European oak uh, occasional sherry casks. They're not very innovative or inventive. Uh, but you know that, that's just not what they're known for. Not in the first fill cast. They do. They do some. I mean, I've seen. Um, I mean, they do do a lot of hogshead refills and stuff like that. I agree with you there. I guess um, they don't do as as min, near as many uh, first fills as like Balvany and stuff does. That's true. I have to give you credit on that. I guess. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that's why we gave him such a low craft score. I mean, comparatively, I gave uh, you know Kilhoman a nine. Uh, Holland Park at 7.5. Uh, Glen Scotia got a 6. Uh, and they're, you know, do a little coloring and like, play that little game on the side, too. So it's kind of, you know, they don't do, you know, the inventive, uh, innovative casks or anything like that. So it's it's pretty close and, and it's lower than, a lot lower than the other ones that I think. I think that's the lowest craft score I might have given. Let me see something. Uh, seven point five five nine seven point five six seven point five yeah four oh actually Bunnhaven got a low one a four I think that was the no, I'm sorry it was Kalila I'm sorry I reversed that Bunnhaven got an eight Kalila got a four because it was just all over the place 
on the craft. So that's the only that's the only one I think that might do a poor job. <laughs> and, and, and the funny thing is, they're both owned by Diageo. Isn't that funny? Like they have great consistency. They have a great variety, decent over above average taste. But when it comes to uh, getting down to the craft, man, that's where the, that's where they they kind of suffer. I think across the board is that maybe they should instead of focusing as much on marketing and, and gimmicks and stuff, focus on more on the craft. And I think they'll, they'll be in a, a better situation. Uh, Clear's unpeated bottles are awesome. Well, some, yes, some, not so much. I mean, I, I, I do not, I'm not a fan of that 17 man. And I've tried it every possible way, every length of sitting out, every length of sitting in the bottle for over a year. Uh, I've, tried it a bunch of different ways. In the Scotch for Dummies video yesterday, I believe they talked about how Lugval and Sensor casks to age in an off-site warehouse. Wow. I might have been Ralphie. Most of the others, Julius, do that, including Ardbeg and Lefroy. They, there, are, there are some, but send most to mainland. They don't have the room. Interesting, huh? Get the 18 for 125. Telex is awesome. Uh, you're talking about the Lagavulin? I do have a Lagavulin 18 here. Um, it's the Fashil bottling from 2018. It's the one I have. And I have had it, even though I haven't opened my own, I've had a sample of it, and it's outstanding. Do we consider uh, independence? No. I try to stay away from considering those because the distilleries themselves that don't really have uh, much, you know. Oh, the Kalila Unpeated 18. I'll try it. It's just a matter of finding it and and wanting to take the gamble because i'll tell you what even though i got the the 17 for only like 120 i thought it was way too much for what the taste was I, I yeah i mean i know what you're saying that they're crafted by the story but they're not they they're not they don't have complete control over the entire span of the bottle like uh you know, the, these regular distillery offerings do. Dejo has a huge warehouse farm, so a lot probably goes there. Yeah. The 18 was 125. Wow. Uh, Kalila 18 impeded at 125. I'll have to look and see if, you know, if I see it, I'll, I might take a gamble on it and, and try it again. But it just was, uh, it just was kind of to me on that one, but. This is a subjective game, unfortunately, to a point. I mean, I'm not saying it's low quality. It just definitely doesn't wasn't my up my alley. Tosker sends all but a few to mainland. Sends them to another distillery near Inverness. Huh. I didn't know they did send a lot of these, uh, but it makes sense because yeah, you only have so much room, and if you have these giant warehouses where they have temperature controls, environmental controls, uh, which I'm sure they do, then they uh, are going to definitely take advantage of that. The 15 sucked and the 18 is day and night better. Okay. Have you ever had the 17 by chance, DHS? Because that was the one I had. It was very, it was a very salty, olivey, just way too much salt. It, it was almost like open it up your mouth and shoving one of those Morton cans and just going like this, ah, <laughs> with salt. Uh, it was rough, man. But uh, I'll take another chance on it just to see. Hmm. We shall see. The Stitchel Reserve is definitely on the radar. Now, if I had my choice to try another unpeated, I would definitely, I think, stick with the Stitchel Reserve first before I try another one because I've heard that one is the best. Um, and I think I saw that in the auction not too long ago. I can't remember what the price of it was. I'll have to take another look. The good thing about this, even though it's still on the drier side, it does have a nice kind of a dark chocolate finish. Uh, after a lot of time, but still a little dry for my tape. I think I'm going to stick to the 3.25. Above average, but not by much. Uh, not a bad buy. I don't have buyer's remorse. Nice spicy dram, savory, long more 16 ish uh, without the uh, complexity, I'd say. 
doesn't surprise me that the Giorgio Malti says, I remember trying uh, to find a parking space at Telesco was a nightmare. Well, the Stitchell is 9, the 18 is 7.5 or 8. It's not that far off. Okay. Let's keep that in mind. Well, I appreciate it, guys. I I do have to go uh, to, to work tomorrow and all that and can't go too far off the rails. But I really appreciate y'all sitting down and having a little look-see with me. And uh, another really good, uh, well, way above average distillery. Um, and I'm glad I, I had took a look at another uh, Diageo because I'm seeing a trend where they do really well as far as they're great with consistency and variety and age statements they're getting better at. Availability is is just top notch. What Where they suffer, I think, across the board for Diageo is specifically the craft issue and they got to work on the value, you know, fine tune those prices a little bit, you know, for your consumer, make it make sense, uh, consistently priced across the thing, not high on variety. Um, I thought we, uh, didn't we, uh, not variety. Sorry. I was looking at it. I, was, I had the wrong distillery up there. They're, they do well with the taste and consistency, but they suffer with variety and value in the craft. Sorry about that. The age statements they do well with, but it's the uh, variety, the uh, value in the craft. It seems like across the board they're going to they're gonna have to do some work on. And, and if they just fine-tune those three little things, they would have an A+, A plus, really. I mean, you couldn't really you know, ding them for much other than, than that. But... Um, like I said, still A minus to B plus uh, deals. Bring out some uh, cast strength offerings like more we filled. Yeah, it does with Kalila. And Porta Seg is another option to get uh, some really good uh, Kalila taste. Um, the annual releases with Dodge are super high craft, at least. Annual releases, yeah. That's true. They, 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 they It's almost like. They, they're too far apart with their high-end stuff and their low-end stuff. It's like they need to kind of bring them to a little bit together, I think, to, to make a more consistent, cohesive, you know, deal with it when it comes to the value of the craft and the variety. But we'll see how that goes. Uh, we're going to take another look at it, I'm sure, in a year or two after we get through some of these other ones that, that we can do. Kalila 22, Fish Shield is fantastic. Beats the Lagavulin 19. Wow. I don't see how you guys get your hands on some of these things. <laughs> i got to try that one, Stephen. Uh, it, sounds, it sounds excellent. Blender's Dream Dream. That's true. Yeah, that's and that, that brings up a good point before we take off, guys. The blending, uh, the blending um, spreadsheet is still alive. I haven't seen any activity on it. Please feel free to put your blends in there. Um, last week we had a really good one from Jason Coates. Did fifty uh, percent of a Jeanston twelve, forty uh, percent of a Glengarry twelve, and ten percent of a Clownleash fourteen. Let it marry for about three weeks before he poured to enjoy, and uh, thought it was uh, awesome sauce, way above average. So. I have had the only the Stella release, the, the original uh, Arbeg Supernova. I have not had the new one, but it uh, looks like DHS thinks it's impressive. Good. It's not overly priced. It's only a couple hundred bucks, too. So, I mean, here in Maryland, they still have it available uh, for a couple hundred dollars. I'm thinking that's probably not too bad for a Supernova release. But uh, without an A statement, I'm kind of like, I don't know, but... Uh, I am an Arbeg fanboy, so it's kind of hard for me to be partial on that one. The new Supernova Blue, the Octomore 10.3 out of the water. Wow. That's saying something. It's great. Steven says better than the 2014 and 15 for you. Wow. Okay. That's amazing. Buy it. It's great. Okay. I might have to take 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 it in. I'm still working on my 2009 uh, Supernova, which I do have uh, some for you, Steven, since you've been such a good a good sport with uh, Sharon. I'm going to be out, uh, Steven, 
before you go, I'm going to be traveling to Knoxville, Tennessee. I don't know how close you are to there. Uh, I'll be there uh, on the weekend of January the 4th. I'm not sure if you have a way to time it. I'm being um, near Morristown specifically for a ham radio convention out there. They have a real big one. Uh, the, I'm going to bring some bottles with me. So maybe if you have uh, a minute, I'll bring, uh, let me know if you can make it. I'll bring the supernova and some other things I think you might uh, like. We can talk about it on the side and see if we can uh, meet up, have a dram or something. Maybe uh, we'll see if you have the time or the uh, means to get there. Um, Multi says I love Octomore, so that has to be great to hear. Yeah, me too. I love the 7.1, the 7.2. Uh, cool. Done. I'll send you a message. Sounds great. Uh, yeah. Hopefully we can uh, organize a little something. And uh, I'll definitely want you to be able to have it. And it's a hard one to find, I'm sure. And I definitely don't mind sharing a little salsa with you while I'm there. Uh, shoot the shit and, and enjoy some really good drams, hopefully. Um, but uh, appreciate everything you've done for the channel, and uh, we'll keep going down the road. We've got plenty of distilleries to look at. I've got to do a little more homework with some of these guys uh, before I uh, go down the path, but I really appreciate you guys being there uh, with me to uh, help out filling in the blanks because it's really hard to, uh, you know, say you've done everything that a distillery has when you, especially when you get to the higher end bottles. So, well, I, I try to make it a habit because, man, with with the way the the county laws are and all that, it it drives me crazy. I can't keep track of what's what and what you're supposed to do and all that mess. So I just I just I'm, I'm more play things in the safe side. <laughs> Thanks DHS for coming out. Uh, hopefully, uh, I'm, I'm met in the middle enough to make it make it make sense on some of these scores, but uh, they are subject to change in the future. So uh, I'm sure we'll have more debates in the future and try to uh, fine tune it a little bit to make it uh, everybody uh, happy on that deal. Yeah, I don't want to be driving it, you know, and 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 being accused of being a bootlegger and all that stuff. I mean, if if I was, you know, bringing some hooch from my bathtub, then I would be like, sure, that would be a really bad no no. But I'm I'm talking high end, nineteen twenty something year old whiskey. <laughs> We better once you start doing some cheaper brands. Yeah. Secret Spirits Advent Calendar. I have not. Um, I looked at. I've seen some of those drinks by the Dram uh, offerings and stuff, but uh, yeah, it's gonna. When I do some of these, yeah, so, some of the, and some of these not so cheap brands that don't do uh, so well on the. Uh, some of the craft mean, man, they're going to definitely get an earful. That's for sure. <laughs> no worries in Tennessee. I hear you there. <laughs> oh, man. Well, it's launch of all, guys. Hopefully uh, you've had a good uh, couple of drams here and there. And uh, yeah, never go through Utah. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. Uh, definitely, if, if not before next Tuesday. And I'll try to take a look at the list. And if you have a if you have a distillery that you'd like to do, uh, come on the, the channel and chat even. Let me know, and maybe we can uh, figure something out. I might have, need a little help with uh, some of these anyway. So cheers. Thanks for stopping by, Malti Alti. Good to see you as well.